I was thinking about somebody in the past. The relationship really never went where it was supposed to go, and two people drifted apart. Where We Are was actually uh, brought to me just on his guitar. He's like, hey, check out the song. That one had a special like coolness to it. The minute he sent it to me and I heard it, I thought I was probably the most honest, uh, probably one of his best work I've ever, ever heard from him. I remember hearing the demo of Where We Are. The strange thing is I, I had a vision of what the completed song should be. It turned out pretty close to what was in my head. When I met John, John was really excited about it. And it was the first time I really wasn't controlling what anybody was doing. I usually had all that stuff in my head. And this time I was just like, you know what? I, I don't care, whatever you, if it's cool, it's cool, let's do it. That one had a special like coolness to it. Like, I'm like, cool, I like this one. Let's start on this song immediately. The recording process was just as important and represented the writing process. In this case, meaning, you know, Rob sits down and has a complete thought. He writes it. And I think uh, Goldie, um, John, and I wanted to also do that as we recorded it in the studio and track it all together in the same room, feeling our way through it. It was only, it, it, it's what the piece deserved. And we had the musicians to do it. You know, and we had a great engineer that could walk us through it and tell us when we sucked and also applaud us when we were on the right track. And like I said, if it wasn't for us four individuals, just those four individuals together, I don't think we could have done it. But yes, tracking it from the beginning to end and doing it different time, you know, to, to it was right was a really organic thing that really brought where we are to the fold, even more than it already was just with the pen and the paper. I'm trying to remember what the magic was. The magic was the song. I think everybody was just excited about it when we got in the studio. All of a sudden, it just came alive. Like, you could hear everything, the pieces, and there weren't many pieces whatsoever. One guitar. Uh, I don't even think there's an electric guitar in there, is there? No. One acoustic, drums, bass, a piano, and a B3. Very simple, simple song, and it sounds huge. The piano is the weight of the song. I wanted those big low notes to, to make the song heavy. The organ, on the other hand, I was listening to the lyrics. When Rob sings an emotional line, I'll play an emotional chord underneath him, something a little, little more tragic sounding. The organ was to complement the lyrics, and the piano was to complement the rhythm section. Bass-wise, it just felt big since the beginning of that song. So to me, I could care less what I was playing, as long as it felt good for him and felt good for the song that he wrote. I've never, I've never played more simple. When Rob told me he wanted to put a female on the song, I thought he was crazy. That was originally Chris's idea. The song was complete in my mind already. It was there, it was done. And um, I, I really didn't understand it, and I think I fought it a little bit. And he's like, he goes, it'd be a really cool idea. He goes, not that it sounds bad with you singing the whole thing, but he goes, the lyrics are so deep and so meaningful that you almost want to hear the other person. But the Nick's performance was so good that now I can't imagine it any other way. In fact, I listened to a, an early rough mix of it that had just Rob's voice, and it sounds like half the song has been gutted out. But wow, just talk about stepping up to the plate. Oh, yeah, Chris Sabini's feel, it's, what he's got is just got that, uh, everything's got that, that, the, the shuffle, even if it's not a shuffle, it's da 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 you know, that becomes because he's got a jazz background. With my feeling and his feeling together, Along with Rob's songs, which are very emotional and deep in feeling, I knew we were going to communicate his words really, really well. But the cool thing was, with the guys that I was working with, were the biggest cheerleaders and, screw that, just do it. You know, you, you're trying to be something that you're not. Well, you really are, but it's not turning out that way. And I think that's where I started believing in myself again, going, well, you know what? I'm just gonna be the guy that I always was and just be honest about the recordings and just do it and trust the guys that I was working with. 